In this video, I'm going to show you an example I found in which you might want to switch from using single color over to color layers, but only for one color. Before you watch this video today, be sure to watch another video I have on YouTube called Seven Key Points About Tracing in SCAL 5. This video uses the same image and also covers some of the elements about single color tracing that will come up in this video today. Okay, here's what I discovered when I was uh, later tracing this image. I, I've got to fascinate this image. I kind of keep using it and exploring and testing things. But anyhow, um, for single color, let's say I'm trying to get that darker color of the orange just for the tail. So I'm going to double click that, select here, and I don't want the other orange. And now, personally, if I were doing it, I'd just go with one color of orange. But, you know, if I stay true to the, the video about, you know, making it a separate color, then I needed, I, and I, I tried different uh, variations. Let me update previous. View. I tried different contrast levels and oh by the way I'm always using a detail of 20 here to try to you know reduce the number of extra little tiny shapes that I don't want uh, but anyhow I found that the best I was able to get was at 576 and if you zoom in um, you can tell that um, when especially when I look right here at this particular part of the tail which I might, you know, be deleting the rest of it and just focusing on just the tail. But I get like a really lousy trace, right? It's very, very rough, and I would not be happy with that. And so I didn't look at every color, but most of the other colors, as I recall, gave a smooth trace. It's just this one particular color, and I think it's because I was trying to do it separately from the rest of the other orange is the reason why I got such bad results, because I've got such a low contrast. But if I, again, if my goal was to get that tail, because it's slightly darker, traced separately, then that's what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK so I can bring it in and compare it in a minute. So, uh, yes, I'm going to do it again. Now that what I discovered then was that if I use color layers to do the same thing, and let's say I set it up at, say, 5, I can come in and I can say, you know what, I don't want these other colors. This is the only one I want traced. And I click on Update Preview, and I can see this nice and smooth now. And sure enough, the nodes are like less than half of what they were with the, uh, with the other uh, with using the single color. So that's nice and smooth now. And so now then let's have a look at both of them. Uh, let's say no. All right. And so I brought this in. Of course, it's grouped together. And I'm going to make it much smaller because right now it's like really big. So let's make it smaller so it's easier to look at both of them side by side. All right. So now I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup, and I'm going to separate them. Okay, and this, of course, is the first one because I see all this extra stuff that comes in from the color layers, but it's really pretty easy to get rid of. So um, I have this one here. So again, let's zoom in and have a look at it. And yep, looks really rough. You know, all parts of it looks bad. Whereas this one over here looks nice and smooth. So then it's just a matter of editing this one. And when it comes to editing, the only thing, I'll, you know, let's say these parts I don't want, the only thing that still is actually separated is just this part. And if I wanted this part, that's pretty easy, you know, to get rid of it. I can just come over to the erase tool and come up here. Let's make the erase tool a little bit smaller. And then I can just come in and kind of click there and click there, you know, and then you drag, just kind of, you know, make that part nice and as smooth as I can, something like that. And then, um, and then it's just a matter of, um, let's come back up here. There we go. And then it's just a matter of coming up here and of course going to object, uh, break apart, and then you can get rid of these extra pieces here that you don't want, whatever you don't want. Um, I'm going to make it equal because then I can also go back and check on these, um, the number of nodes under the simplify window. So you know what, let me get rid of that and that. And then over here, I'll get rid of the same thing. Oh, I got to break it apart. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, then if I compare nodes, let's select this one, which is the one that uh, was done using the single color. And I go to simplify, see it's 516 nodes. And then this one over here, simplify, it's only 116. So big difference. And of course, but more importantly, again, if you zoom in, you can see that this one, it would cut nice and smooth and this one would just not cut very nicely. So um, for what it's worth, I know for a lot of people new to tracing, this is going to be too much. They're going to go like, no way, this drives me crazy, <laughs> you know, because they're not going to know what to do. <clears throat> I guess the point really to get across is just that you're not restricted to using the same setting for all colors. You could go back and forth. If you're not getting what you want in single color, then just go over to, you know, the color layers and then just pick what color you want going that way. And uh, again, nice, smooth, uh, trace and not a really difficult way to edit it. So hope this is helpful. 
Also, if you're interested in learning more about Scal 5, Rob at Scrappy-Doo has created a webinar called Why Scal 5 is a Game Changer for Design Space Users. Uh, and it's true for other people, too. It really is a very functional program. Uh, so if you're interested in signing up for the webinar, here is the link on the screen to use. I created a bit.ly link so that it wouldn't be too long. Um, but I'll leave it up here for a bit so that you'll have a chance to write it down. Thank you again for watching my video.